What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update, the stimulus package update on the $3.5 trillion, daily news, what you need to know about with money, investing, the stock market, and pretty much everything going on in our country. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. New videos come out every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you find these videos helpful, don't forget to hit the like button for us down below. There's a lot of big news coming out about a COVID-19 pill from pharmaceutical giant Merck that would be for people already infected that would be able to take this pill after infection. It would severely reduce uh, symptoms and possible hospitalizations. Here's some more information. Uh, shares of Merck, which could be on the move on the announcement that it's seeking authorization for an antiviral COVID drug known as, I'm going to give us a shot here, Molnupiravir. Not bad. Uh, notable because it's the first in pill form, and apparently clinical trials show it cutting the risk of hospitalization or death in half. Uh, and this is pretty big, Julie, for the company that, as many will recall, actually stepped away from the vaccine development race in deference uh, to the other makers. So a big deal uh, on this drug uh, development. Um, yes, it is a big development. It seems like they're going to ask for emergency use authorization. They had this study that had been in progress, and they stopped the study because it was uh, proving to be so successful. So again, they're going to ask for an EUA. Why is this so significant? Well, we still have a vaccination rate in this country that's not up to par, and therefore, um, you still have a lot of hospitals that are overloaded. We're seeing a lot of anecdotal reports now of people with other urgent conditions that are not able to get the care that they need because the hospitals are overloaded with COVID patients, many of whom, most of whom, the vast majority of whom have not been vaccinated. So if you have another option for these folks to cut down on the hospitalization and death rate, obviously that is a huge deal. And also, by the by, should help hopefully prevent people from taking things like medications meant for horses that are actually harmful for people. So, you know, there's a lot that this could do, I think. Um, and the market seems to be viewing it that way as well, um, overall for the market, as well as specifically for, for Merck here, when it looks at the outcome of this, of this drug. That is, of course, assuming that the EUA ends up being approved by the FDA. On the stimulus package, now that President Biden has stepped in between the Democrats fighting amongst themselves and uh, Joe Manchin, Senator Joe Manchin, has gotten pretty much ambushed on his yacht, the Democrats are forced to come back to the negotiating table between the two packages together. And I think the Democrats know they're going to have to come down from the $3.5 trillion number. Uh, they're going to have to come down a little bit. Um, I don't know, $3 trillion, somewhere in the $2 trillions. Senator Joe Manchin is going to have to come up from $1.5 trillion. Here is uh, Democratic Rem Representative Pramila Jayapal, the leader of the Progressive Caucus in the House of Representatives, which is like 100 Democrats. Uh, here's what she has to say on the matter. I want to talk about negotiations. Some top Democrats and White House officials are floating a $2.1 trillion package, a lot smaller than what you are currently at, $3.5 trillion. Are you open to $2.1 trillion? Well, what we've said from the beginning is it's never been about the price tag. It's about what we want to deliver. The price tag comes out of that. So uh, we understand that we, uh, you know, the 3.5 we thought was negotiated already is clearly yeah. not negotiated. We understand we have to get 50 senators on board and we have to keep everyone in the House on board. And so we are now going back to make sure what is the way that we can get all of the critical programs that we had identified, those things I talked to you about, child care, paid leave. Yeah, climate. and I'm going to get to that in a second. Yeah, how do we get all of those things in, but, you know, and it, but perhaps for a shorter period of time and uh, be able to get then to the number from that? The critical thing is let's get our priorities in and then we'll figure out what it actually costs. And I understand that, but there is a lot of focus and a lot of the negotiating is on that top line number. Is, is for example, is $2 trillion, $2.1 trillion your absolute floor? We're not thinking about the number. And the president said this to us, too. He said, don't start with the number. Start with what you're for, and that's what he's asked them for. And then let's come to the number from there. So that's how we're thinking about it. And that makes sense. But you, uh, you have been looking at 
this for a long time. You have been <laughs> looking at the, uh, the policies and what it adds up to and how you can do it. I mean, this is what your focus has been yeah. almost solely. Yeah. So you, I'm sure have looked at whether or not you can do what you want to do for $2 trillion. Well, we don't know what the number is yet. There's no, there's no number on the table yet that is everyone has agreed to. It's not like they come to us think? and said, I don't feel the need to give a number because I gave my number, it was 3.5. So if you're in a negotiation, you need to have a counter offer before you bid against yourself. So if we're not looking at numbers, what about 1.5, like what Senator Well, Manchin that's was? not gonna happen. But so it's gonna that, be somewhere- Why won't it add up to that Because number? that's too small to get our priorities in. So it's gonna be somewhere you know, between 1.5 and 3.5. And I think the White House is working on that right now because remember what we want to deliver is childcare, paid leave, yeah. climate change. And I want to get to housing. that, but I just, so 1.5 is too small, but you won't say if 2 trillion is too small. Because I don't, I don't have a definite number yet. I mean, I don't have a counter offer. Okay. It would be like buying a house, Dana, and going in to make an offer. And then somebody says, well, what's the lowest number you would take? Why would I do that? I can't blame her for trying to, not negotiate. You don't want to negotiate against yourself. It's like saying um, three point five trillion dollars. Are you willing to accept one point five? Well, no. Well, how how low are you willing to go? Well, I'm not willing to say that because <laughs> if you're whatever you're willing to say, they all already know that that is how low you're willing to go. Um, I'm surprised of this two point one trillion dollar. Um, number because I feel like Joe Manchin's going to pounce on that and say, oh, two trillion, two trillion, two trillion. Um, it'll be interesting to see if this if this package gets settled around two trillion dollars. Um, let me know your thoughts on that. Do you think two trillion, two trillion, two point one trillion dollars? How do you feel about that? Now, remember, the third stimulus check package was one point nine trillion. But remember that when we think about the things in this package with the child tax credit, those monthly stimulus checks or those monthly checks, whatever you want to call them, um, that were from the third stimulus check package, uh, $250 to $300 per month for 65 million children. It's about 40 million households. Some households have more than one child. Those end at the end of this year. They want to extend that for. Um, 65 million children going forward. And they want to include Medicare benefits, new Medicare benefits, hearing, vision, dental, hearing aids, dentures for seniors, and lower the Medicare eligibility age to age 60. Between the two of those, that's expected to be well over a trillion dollars. Um, from what I think, it's between the two of those, it's expected to be somewhere close to 1.5 trillion. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, the question is, how much room will, will there be after uh, the benefits for seniors, Medicare 2.0, extra Medicare benefits, whatever you want to call that, and the benefits for children, child tax credits, kind of benefits families too, um, child tax credits. And I'll just kind of bring up this list here so we can kind of look at these other things here. So number four and five are those two main big items here in this package, a Medicare expansion for seniors and a child tax credits for children and the family of children, $250 to $300, those monthly stimulus checks that were originally uh, passed through the third stimulus check package, and now they're talking about extending them in this next package. Uh, they were originally talking about extending them until 2025, but now when they're, they're talking about cutting the package, they're talking about several different cuts to this, not being able to do it till 2025, maybe only being able to extend them for a year or two or three, maybe uh, having to cut the income eligibility, um, maybe cut, having to cut uh, all sorts of restrictions to them. We really don't know all the things they're talking about, but they are talking about having to uh, significantly have restrictions, income eligibility, uh, Senator Joe Manchin is talking about. Um, remember in the third stimulus check package, uh, Senator Joe Manchin talked about that, um, or I'm sorry, in the third stimulus check package, the Democrats made it so you didn't need any earned income. Previously, before this last year, you needed earned income on a tax return to get the child tax credits. In 2017, uh, former President Trump raised the child tax credits from $1,000 a year 
to $2,000 a year per child, but you would only get it on a tax return. There were not monthly checks. They were $2,000 a child. You didn't get it in monthly checks, and you had to have earned income. You had to work a job and get earned income. Then you would get it on as a basically uh, less money owed to the IRS. Okay. Um, now the Democrats have raised to three thousand dollars per child to thirty six hundred dollars per child based on your uh, child's age, and they have monthly checks. Um, and you don't need an earned income. You could be a stay at home mom, or you can be a um, a uh, person retired on Social Security. Remember that Social Security is not considered earned income. Uh, believe it or not, even though you earned for many, many years, it's not considered earned income right now. Um, yeah, I, I understand. Believe it or not, you can look it up. Social Security is not considered earned income, even though you earned for many, many years. Um, I don't know why that is. It's just the way it is. But between these two items, uh, that's going to be over a trillion dollars, probably, uh, depending on, you know, how it's actually all calculated out. There's also expected to be an adult tax credit in there for adults making under fifty thousand um, dollars. How that's going to work, we will have to see when the final bill comes out. Um, if that's going to be a item on your tax return, if that's going to be a uh, type of check, a monthly check or something like that, like the child tax credits are, uh, we will have to see uh, as we get closer to this. There's also expected to be lower prescription drug prices in there. So anybody that has prescription drug prices, uh, they're expected to be lower. That's a huge part of this bill. So that will affect, I don't know what percentage of Americans are on prescription drugs, 50% of the country or something like that, uh, but they are expected to be lowered, so that is a huge part of this uh, program. Also, two years of free community college that is still in this program. That is a huge thing to at least offer, um, you know, a, I mean, the cost of college is insane, $25,000 or more per year. So to have something for free to be able to offer that is a huge thing going forward for the future of our country. Um, and it, it, you don't just have to be an 18 year old. You could be 40 years old, 60 years or 80 years old. And, uh, probably, I mean, we're going to have to see how the wording of the bill comes out, but I don't think there's an age limit on it. Um, so yeah, paid family and medical leave is a big thing on there. Um, free, um, pre-K, where do I have that on this list here? Uh, yeah, that's somewhere on here too. Free preschool right here, uh, is expected to be on here as well. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different things here. Lower taxes for people under $400,000 and higher taxes for people making over $400,000, as well as higher taxes for corporations making over a million dollars. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of this, uh, this package. Remember, this package is going to be fully paid for, especially if it's anywhere near $2 trillion dollars. This package will be fully paid for. They were saying this package was going to be fully paid for at around $3.5 trillion. So uh, if the package is anywhere near $2 trillion, they will definitely have it fully paid for. Uh, it's fully paid for by raising taxes on corporations. Um, they're going to raise the tax rate um, from 21%, the corporate tax rate, probably to around 26.5%. Everything is still up to negotiation, literally until the day they pass it in the House, the Senate, and the presidency. Remember that the corporate tax rate used to be 35% back in 2017 when former President Donald Trump uh, lowered the corporate tax rate uh, for corporations from 35% all the way down to 21%. With the 2017 Trump tax cuts, uh, which they say added over $2 trillion to the national deficit, um, that package was not paid for at all because they didn't raise taxes. They, they lowered taxes <laughs> on it. So, um, yeah, so the, even if they raised taxes on corporations from 21% to 26.5%, that's still significantly lower than what it was just four years ago when corporations were paying 35% taxes. So um, if you're a corporation making over a million dollars per year, which um, 
it won't affect corporations making over under a million dollars per year. Uh, I think they still should be relatively happy because 26.5% um, compared to 35% where they were uh, just a few years ago, that's still a relative win for them. I mean, I know it's a few more percent than they were a, year, a few years ago, but um, I mean, hey, I mean, you know, it is what it is. I mean, you can't really uh, control anything in Congress, right? I mean, you could always go and do your one vote, but 35% uh, uh corporate taxes a few years ago, and now you're at, uh, even if the, this goes through at 26.5%, uh, that's still significantly lower. So, but this, these ne this next package, if it's anywhere near $2 trillion, it will be fully paid for, um, at least based on what they're, the politicians are saying, because they, they expected it to be fully paid for near $3.5 trillion. So, but let me know your thoughts on um, the package being around $2 trillion um, with uh, with those things we just saw on the screen there. Let me know your thoughts. Um, do you think Senator Joe Manchin has a big role in this with him being uh, $1.5 trillion? Now, remember that on October 1st, which was two days ago at this point, that started the new fiscal year. So... What does that mean? Um, the new fiscal year, instead of being January 1st, it actually starts on October 1st. So um, the Democrats actually can pass more reconciliation packages starting today. Well, of course, they're still passing this package, but they can actually pass more packages now through the reconciliation process, which means uh, 50 to 51 votes in the Senate. So later on, at any given point now, they can pass more packages with 50 to 51 votes for this fiscal year, which is October 1st to October 1st of, or September 30th of 2022. So um, the Democrats basically have another full year until the November 2022 elections, which is when the House and the Senate go up for re-election. It's going to be a very big re-election because as you know, the Democrats have control of the House, the Senate, and the presidency right now. The Republicans had control of the House, the Senate, and the presidency in 2017, which doesn't seem that far ago, that far along ago, uh, four years ago. That's when the 2017 Trump tax cuts were passed. Um, that's when former President Donald Trump raised the child tax credits from 1,000 to 2,000, also passed that um corporate tax reduction from 35% down to 21%. So both Republicans and Democrats use the reconciliation process when they have control of everything. And um, that was short-lived for the Republicans. They had two years. And the question is, will it be short-lived for the Democrats as well when this November 2022 election comes up? And let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Senator Bernie Sanders says the history shows that when the um, the total controlling party, when one party controls the House, the Senate, and the presidency, they call it a supermajority. Um, Bernie Sanders says he's a uh, as a history of studying that that if the party in control doesn't do exactly what they need to do for the American people, that they quickly lose that supermajority. So. Um, this next package, which President Biden is calling his signature package, it's this American Families Plan, and really this bipartisan infrastructure package, kind of the Build Back Better package. You've probably heard that term a lot here. Um, that's both of these packages combined. Build Back Better is the two of them, the stimulus package and the physical infrastructure package combined. And if he, for some reason, doesn't get them both passed, um, that would probably seal the deal and, uh, they for sure would have serious, serious consequences in the midterm elections. Now, remember, that's not the presidential election. That won't be until 2024, which is expected to be a rematch of former president Donald Trump and current president Biden. Of course, you can let me know your thoughts on that, but that's still quite a ways away. I mean, we're still looking at, a full three plus years away at this point. So, um, but the midterm elections, that's even still a full year away at this point. So the Democrats still have a full year of control of the House and the Senate 
um, and reconciliation processes. So it's not like they're not going to use them. I know Mitch McConnell was all uh, worked up about them using the reconciliation process. But honestly, uh, they had their crack at the bat when they um, did the 2017 Trump tax cuts. They had a full two years of uh, control of the House, the Senate, and the presidency. So, of, of course, it's Republicans versus Democrats. But we're also going to have to deal with this debt limit ceiling which is a major, major issue. We now have a 15 days um, to deal with that. But really, you can't wait until the 15th day or even the 14th day. And you really can't. I mean, if you wait until the last day, and that, remember, that's just an estimated day where the country is literally going to default on October 18th. That's an estimated day. What if it's October 17th or October 16th? And the country is going to be an absolute nightmare if they even let it go that close. So they're going to be trying to pass it this week. Um, I honestly think, uh, look at it, looking at it from a nonpartisan point of view, looking at it from a realist point of view, I think the easiest thing to do to pass the debt limit ceiling would be and to not let our country default. They have to pass the debt limit ceiling. Um, or else our country will default, and we can't let our country default um, even for a day. We just we can't let it happen. It's not like a government shutdown. It's it's it would be catastrophic. I think the easiest thing for them to do would be for the Republicans. They would be able to, um, you know, step aside and not vote for it, which is what they want to do. They could literally just step aside and grant unanimous consent in the Senate. And just let the Democrats pass it with the 50 to 51 votes. Um, and then the Republicans wouldn't have to vote for it. And they could keep their integrity, I guess, uh, and not vote for it. And then the uh, Democrats can pass it. I think they should do it this week because by the end of this week, we'd be looking at like October 10th or October 11th. I mean, that's well too close. Uh, I think they really need to do that by this week. So you can let me know your thoughts, but I think that's exactly how they should do it. I think they should do it this week. I don't think they have time to do it through the reconciliation process. I think that's a much cleaner, faster way to do it. And um, I think that satisfies both parties. And remember that the Democrats actually let the Republicans in the past do that exact thing, raise the debt limit ceiling through unanimous consent, where the uh, Democrats did exactly that, let the Republicans raise the debt limit ceiling through unanimous consent with the 50 to 51 votes when uh, the Republicans controlled the Senate. So um, there's no reason that the Republicans shouldn't let the Democrats do that. So and then our country averts default, which is really all we want to happen. I mean, our country defaulting would be the worst thing ever. Um, and we don't want to see anybody miss Social Security payments. We don't want to see the government miss debt obligations. We don't want to see people miss child tax credit payments. Uh, we don't want to see bondholders miss bond payments, uh, Treasury miss Treasury payments. We don't want to see anything like that. We don't want to see any more stock term. We don't want to see anything like that. So um, I think that's just what they should do. Um, the Republicans and Democrats have actually passed a couple decent bills here. They passed a government shutdown bill here to prevent a government shutdown here just a few days ago. So they've actually been getting along. So just come together and let's act like adults here and pass the bill this week. So <laughs> let me know your thoughts in the comments. But I'll keep you up to date on everything here. Remember, new videos come out here on our channel every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so. And uh, click here to watch my newest video on Senator Joe Manchin getting ambushed on his $700,000 houseboat or yacht. Man, click here to watch that video if you haven't yet. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.